Hi there, welcome to your Elvis guide. I've got some pretty exciting news. We're well on our way to 1k subscribers. Well, let's check out what we're going to do today. Well, I heard the news. That's good to rock it tonight. Well, I heard the news. That's good to rock it tonight. Hi there, welcome again. Today I've got another ultra rare record for you. It's Elvis Presley number two from the UK. But before we go to that record and the story behind it, I want to thank you for being such an enthusiastic uh, support for my uh, channel. We're well on our way to the 1K subscribers, uh, something I've never dreamed of. I um, haven't shared the story behind uh, my channel with you before, but... Um, it was in, 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 in August, uh, around August 16, that it was looking on the internet f for a documentary um, on uh, Elvis and uh, his death, um, because I never really saw a good one. And the, the, the story is on YouTube, but really in bits and pieces and with a lot of holes in it. So, um, well, um, I was also quite sick at the time, so I had to be moved to the hospital. And, well, you've got plenty of time in a hospital, I can tell you that. So, but I couldn't take any, any, any uh, devices. Uh, so I um, secretly on my mobile phone compiled the documentary, uh, which started it all, 1977, the year Elvis Presley died. Um, I posted that online and it was probably a, a, f a few days after August 16 and, and got uh, uh, overwhelming views and from that uh, the channel took off. Until now um, I've just made episodes um, of uh, Your Elvis Guide with um, stories I wanted to share. but. I feel it's not my channel, it's a channel f from you all, all you people who are watching. I mean, it's not television, but it's a one-way uh, one communication. Um, so, I would really like to ask you um, to fill in um, the little questionnaire. I, uh, uh, you, you, can, you, can, you can see it pop up. Um, uh, in your screen right now and it's a little eye in a circle and um, under that button is a questionnaire and I would ask you to to, to, to fill in that questionnaire and, and, and give me uh, uh, some 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 well feed me with what you want to see because I also want to make videos that you want to watch Okay, Elvis' second album. What can we tell about that? Okay, so first, if you want to know anything about uh, Elvis and his recording sessions, his recording work, his recorded work, if you want to know anything about Elvis, his recording sessions and his recorded work, then um, there are great books and there's a great website. Uh, you can uh, just look something up and you'll be amazed um, what we found out through the decades. Um, it all started out with this book in, uh, I think it's from 1984 and uh, I bought it a little bit later in 1986. And it's uh, from um, some Danish guys. Uh, fans um, and one of them is uh, Ernst Jurgensen and Ernst, Ernst, and Ernst Jurgensen Ernst Jurgensen he is the uh, producer nowadays of the Follow the Dream label that label that um, brings all these great uh, Elvis albums uh, full of outtakes live performances you've never heard and if you are really uh, an anti enthusiastic collector 
then well you, you should own um, these albums well you shouldn't but uh, but it's it's great fun I can tell you that um, Ernst Jurgensen started out as a fan and then dived into the archives of RCA records and came up with his buddies um, I never know their names uh, I haven't remembered them but with not mentioning it, I'm doing uh, them wrong. And Jurgensen, Erik Rasmussen and Johnny Mickelson. Um, well, for me as a teenager, this was the Bible. Sorry, but it's... Um, but, well, through the decades, they found so many new material that um, eventually in 1989 and Jurgensen came up with a new book and that's, that's this one um, Elvis Recording Sessions and Live in Music I think it's 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 a standard work it's uh, the definite uh, 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 dictionary no it's it's the definite book on Elvis recording sessions. Um, every bit and piece is probably in it, up to that date, of course. And, well, again, it's, it's f f for a collector like me, it's, it's, it's gold. It's, it, it's, it's good reading stuff and everything you need to know is in it. Uh, so I thought, well, this must be it. But um, of course, one one year after this book was published, um, I think in nineteen. One year after this book was published, the follow the dream label started, and since nineteen ninety nine, we've now seen, well, probably one hundred and fifty albums full of outtakes. Uh, live concerts, um, well, you, you, you can name it, I think they're about to hit the bottom of the archives. Um, but there was so many in the vaults and we've seen it all, probably most of it. And um, a lot of it is not in this book. And if you are really, are want to dig deep then there are two options um, there's a great masterpiece and that's called um, ultimate Elvis um, it's three vo volumes and it's far more extensive than than the Ernst Jorgensen book which is about the recordings because this is also about the albums, the singles. The um, it's a great book. It's quite expensive actually, and and it's 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 a real collectible. Um, but again, it's fun to read if you just want to know everything about Elvis music. Um, so. These are the books I turn to when I want to know more about an album and want to share stories about it with you. Then I'm diving in these books. And you can see behind me, the, over here, you can see the, the, the hardcover of Ultimate Elvis with the, with the other volumes. I, I, I will probably do some, 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 extra episode on it or I will refer to it a lot um, when we talk about albums because the guys who made this uh, deserve all the credit um, for the information in it and one of the guys is Keith Flynn uh, and Keith Flynn has a website and well if you don't have enough money to buy such a nice collectible or you just uh, want to search very quick and don't want to go through a book then that website is your 
ultimate reference. Um, KeithFlynn.com and you will find anything. It's, 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 it's remarkable. It's a masterpiece. Having said that, of course, this episode is on Elvis' second album. But not the American one, no. The one from the United Kingdom. And I will hear you say, is that remarkably different from the album that was released in the United States? Yes, it is. Not track-wise. Uh, the English had a policy that they switch tracks around a little bit on their albums so you could have a an album um, which looked the same in the united states and great britain but had a different track listing uh, throughout the decades um, but this one is identical track wise but it has a mega rare front cover it's a legend so here it is, Elvis Presley number two. Um, my copy is not the greatest. You can see severe cuts in the in the back, um, but it's a delicious one. If you look at the vinyl, it's 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 really uh, shiny. Um, but so this is the cover of the uh, British original Elvis Presley number two. Um, an album that was released in April of 1957, where the uh, original Elvis album was released um, in fall of uh, 1956, probably October. The recording sessions for this album had taken place um, on September 1st to uh, September 3rd in the Radio Recorders studios in Hollywood. And I think you are familiar with the album um, that comes with this cover. This is the, the um, first run original American uh, version, the LPM. Um, which is long play mono uh, uh, and well it's a classic it's it's it, it's a classic album and um, it's really funny because in those days in the 50s um, mono was um, the monaural sound was the way to release albums uh, they did experiments with stereo, they had a binaural sound, uh, but it was not for mass production yet. Um, later on in the 60s and 70s, we had these albums. Um, I will take it out of his sleeve. Um, it's identical, but this is the LSP, the long stereo play version and um, it comes with this sleeve which is a typical 70s sleeve for Elvis and you, you can see this is probably a 1978 version um, with the black uh, 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 with the black RCA label um, with a uh, with the dark and the 70s RCA logo um, well, it's horrific. It's horrific. How could they do that? They added, uh, 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 they, they reprocessed the sound. So it sounded like stereo. And I've only have these records for collector's sake, but they're utter garbage. I can tell you that. Okay. So move away with that. Um, so now we have the, um, yeah, there you are. So we have the American. You can see them uh, uh, here. And the UK. And well, if you talk about design and well, a guy that was soon to become the king of rock and roll, then of course um, the, 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 the 
UK version is like stunning and well the, the, the American version was a little bit with Elvis in his shirt and looking up well it could have been the cover of a gospel album as well probably um, no offense but um, I really 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 dig the UK version and the both of these both of these albums if you look at the first pressing they're very rare but if you are looking for a uk version then you probably need some seven eight hundred dollars to buy uh, to buy your album uh, and that's uh, uh, that's an awful lot of money for just uh, an album but then you have a very rare Elvis Presley album. Um, well, it's something interesting to tell uh, about um, this, um, these, these, these albums, um, because the the um, the UK album was on the uh, his master's voice label. You can you, you can say that. That's probably the the um, well the, the English will shoot me, but it's the 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 UK version of uh, uh, well. Okay, um, it's only his master's voice um, label, and um, well, it's beautiful. It's 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 stunning red. It's it's like uh, it's 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 like red wine. The, the the color and there's Nipper the dog that you uh, can also see on the. Um, listening to the, the, the gramophone. Listen, um, you, you can also see that on the RCA Victor uh, uh, label. Um, but in the UK it was called His Master's Voice and the album was officially called Rock and Roll Number no. 2. So we first had Rock and Roll Number no. 1, the debut album, um, which came out in spring of 1956. And the Rock and Roll number two um, came out almost a year later in the UK, and well, it was a, a an album full of um, rock and roll, of course, but there are also some strange choices on it. Um, Rip it up, love me, they're great Lieber and Stoller tunes. Um, but then there was like Old Shep, the uh, uh, the song in which Elvis sings that he loses a dog and, 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 and well, he had to shoot the dog. And that's, uh, that's, that's not really my piece of cake. And with all the strong, Within the strong selection, it's 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 um, it looks a little bit out of place. Um, there's also how do you think I feel, and we now know from the tapes that survived from the Sun era that um, how do you think I feel was already recorded in uh, the Sun era. Uh, 1954 or 1955 uh, oh, but RCA never got the uh, the tapes for it there's only a slapback tape in which you can hear uh, the, the the guitar of Scotty Moore vague doing how do, how do you think I feel and it's it's Elvis re-recorded how do you think I feel uh, in those early days of September uh, for this record.
it's a it's a very nice record is always the case with Elvis albums is that there are no hit singles on it almost every album he produced the hit singles the 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 the, the, the strong tracks that were meant to be hit singles were left out of the album um, because the colonel thought that um, the singles would do better in the charts if they were not on an album. Otherwise, if people bought the album, they didn't need to buy the singles. I think that's his philosophy. Um, commerci commercially, could be wise, but if you look at albums right now, Elvis albums, then I always got the feel that the strongest material is lacking. And that's why I make a playlist, then it's in chronological order, sessions, um, song after song. And because it tells me so much more and you get a far better mix of what Elvis was doing in that period. So I never felt that his albums represented him best in the uh, period that they were released. Okay, rock and roll number two. It was recorded on September 1st until September 3rd and some three weeks later Elvis came back to Tupelo on the Mississippi Alabama Fair and Dairy Shell and there he did it a great open air concert and he included some songs of this album on it and one of the songs is called Long Tail Sally and that's a Little Richard song and so to close this episode it's from the Mississippi Alabama Fair and Dairy Show. Long Tail Sally, you can find it on either the American Elvis or the uh, the 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 uh, UK Rock and Roll Number no. Two. Um, have fun! It's a great rock and roll performance, and this is Elvis in 1956. As for now. I greet you once again. Don't forget to fill in the questionnaire and subscribe to my channel and you will enjoy um, some more episodes of Your Elvis Guide. Thank you very much for supporting me and well, see you again. Bye. Yeah, yeah.
Elvis has left the building. I've told you absolutely straight up to this point, you know that he has left the building. He left the stage and went out the back with the policeman and he is now gone from the building. Uh, Elvis has left the building. I've told you absolutely straight up to this point, you know that he has left the building. He left the stage and went out the back with the policeman and he is now gone from the building.